Christopher for this nice presentation. Now I request Dr. G C Reddy sir uh, to please invite Dr. Lodi for uh, his uh, uh, presentation and to moderate his session. Dr. Reddy sir, please. Dr. Sumitra Lodi, a diabetologist and a professor of medicine at Isra Hospital, Hyderabad. He is a concurrent physician and a diabetologist with more than 30 years of experience in the field. He has many scientific papers to his credit, published in national and international journals, delivered lectures at regional and national form. And now I request Dr. Lodi to go ahead with the talk on uh, adaptive dyslipia, what is new? Okay. Thank you, sir, uh, uh, for the introduction. So, uh, I'll be discussing about diabetic dyslipidemia. So, you are not audible, please. Uh, can you hear me now, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. yeah. yeah. So, uh, to start with, the burden associated with the diabetic dyslipidemia is very high. So, uh, almost uh, uh, it's around 13.2% of the persons who are above the age of 50 and uh, 50 uh, to 70 uh, are having diabetic dyslipidemias. So, uh, this condition increases uh, 2.4% times the cardiovascular mortality, 70% uh, of the diabetic patients die due to uh, cardiovascular diseases. There is 2.5 uh, times increase in risk of stroke, its leading cause of blindness uh, and it's uh, one of the leading cause of ESRD and 50% uh, cases of non-traumatic amputations are associated with uh, diabetes. The duration of diabetes usually will determine uh, the amount of burden of complications. So, as uh, two years of diabetes, first, uh, patients have chances of developing uh, the complications for, are around 15% as compared to 15 years where it, it uh, dramatically increases to 48%. 9 out of 10 uh, diabetics are uh, having dyslipidemias. So, such a high prevalence of this epidemia is there uh, in with the diabetic patients. So, diabetic dyslipidemia consists of a triad, that is, there is increase in triglyceride levels, decrease in HDL cholesterol, and uh, SDL, LDLC levels are increased. So, all the three in combination are leading to the complications associated with uh, this condition. Fasting... Uh, High tri triglyceride levels are usually high triglyceride uh, as the levels of triglyceride as, uh, increases uh, more more than 250. Uh, there is associated increase in LDLC level as well. So, does lowering the levels of LDLC reduces the event? This is the question which we have to answer. So. Almost relatively 37% reduction in the uh, cardiovascular mortality is there with reducing the level of LDLC, which has been achieved with high uh, intensity uh, uh, atorostatin or statin treatment. So, baseline LDL levels were around 118, which were reduced to 82 milligram percent. And, uh, Triglycerides from 173 to 143 milligram uh, were achieved. Uh, uh, so then, following this, there is 37 percent reduction in relative uh, risk. So, 
So there are uh, various trials associated with this. Uh, the, uh, so patient at the with diabetes, the baseline levels this seventy two percent sorry seventeen point one percent increase in level of uh, uh, myocardial infarction strokes in patients with dyslipidemias. So, despite achieving a reduction in LDLC of to uh, 30 milligram per deciliter or uh, diabetic patient, the CV events uh, have been decreased to 14.4%. Uh, so, uh, th th there must be some other factors which are responsible for, for the morbidity and mortality. So, other type of lipoprotein that is lipoprotein A increase can be attributed to this condition. So, Along with the drug therapy, we have to make sure that the patient goes aggressive lifestyle changes uh, such as decrease uh, in body weight, uh, increase physical activity. In fact, an active person who is uh, uh, going for routine aerobic exercises, the triglyceride levels come down so drastically. So thereby increasing uh, the well-being of the person and reducing the level of fat. Uh, atherosclerotic card uh, cardiovascular diseases. Then this is the main problem which is faced by uh, the uh, in Indian patients belonging to Indian subcontinent that is high levels of triglycerides. So the serious factors are increases uh, with this. So normal, uh, so, uh, normal triglyceride levels should be less than 150, borderline high will be between 150 to 199 high between 200 to 499 and very high with triglyceride levels above 500. So the target treatment optimal should be less than 100 milligrams. This is the recommendation. So uh, a moderate reduction in the triglyceride levels that is greater than 200 uh, triglycerides uh, compared to less than 200, there is a difference of 13.5 5% reduction in mortality due to myocardial infarction. So it's a significant reduction. So thereby reducing the triglyceride levels, the cardiovascular mortality can be decreased. So this should be the target in managing patients with uh, uh, dyslipidemia, specifically increased levels of triglycerides. So the same thing is... Uh, the reduction in uh, triglyceride levels reduces the CV event. Almost this, as you can see over here, 35% of relative risk reduction with triglyceride lowering therapy in patients with baseline triglycerides more than 204 and HDL less than 34. So there is a dramatic reduction in the mortality. Funofibrates have been the drugs which have been used for a long time for management of uh, hypertriglycerideemias. So have found to be beneficial in improving the cardiovascular health of the patient. The reason for that can be reduction in triglyceride levels and SDLDLC levels. So thereby, uh, with reduction of uh, these uh, uh, things, uh, HDL levels have uh, found to be increased. So thereby, phenofibrates should be added in the treatment of diabetic dyslipidemia to improve the level of HDL as well. Then we have a new molecule that uh, uh, PPAR alpha gamma, which have been there in the market for a few years. Cardiovascular outcome data is still not there, but it has decreased uh, dyslipidemia, hypertriglyceridemia uh, in type 2 diabetics. So uh, it's one of the specific drugs for diabetic dyslipidemia, that is serotonin. PCSK and I is uh, they also decreases the le level of uh, VLDL, LDL, and specifically uh, lipoprotein A levels have been decreased. So thereby, uh, the mortality associated with this dyslipidemia has drastically been decreased with these molecules. So the uh, three studies, uh, strength, prominent, and evaporate have uh, under uh, have been uh, going uh, going on for diabetic dyslipidemias. 
strength trial uh, has been withdrawn as no benefit was found. Prominent ev evaporative trials are still going on. So uh, uh, the end point uh, myocardial infarction, ischemic stroke, or unstable angina requiring unplanned revascularization is the primary endpoint. Secondary endpoint is all cause mortality. Any uh, coronary revascularization, heart failure, total stroke, retinopathy, or any complications of the uh, uh, dyslipidemia has been taken as a secondary endpoint. So uh, it's uh, uh, the first arm is uh, from three to five weeks and it has it will be continuous till for five years. The result primary endpoint percentage IP versus placebo is 94 is to uh, 74. So there is decrease in volume of fibrofatty plug uh, compared uh, to the placebo arm. Lipid Association of India has been uh, trying to make out certain recommendations for management of uh, dyslipidemia and diabetics. So as it is uh, uh, dynamically changing, uh, so we have to keep on up upgrade this uh, recommendation. That is a challenge. Uh, so first visit, fasting lipid profile has to be taken. Then second visit, non-fasting lipid profile. If suppose on the first visit, non-fasting lipid profile is taken, then on the second uh, visit, fasting lipid profile has to be taken for the patient. So Fasting as well as non-fasting lipid profile has to be taken uh, for the patient. Non-HDLC is the primary target for uh, ASCVD prevention as per uh, Lipid Association of India 2016 recommendation. So meta-analysis of the data obtained from uh, the statin-treated patient uh, suggestive of uh, decrease in uh, risk factor that is cardiovascular diseases by high intensity uh, 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 statin treatment. So, if uh, LDLC levels are more than 100, uh, then uh, there is just 2 percent reduction in the cardiovascular diseases. And similarly, if it has uh, been brought down to less than 100, then the risk reduction is drastic, dramatically 32 percent. Patients with type 1 diabetics are at increased risk of atherosclerotic cardiovascular diseases. So current guidelines indicate that patients with type 1 DM as well uh, be treated similar uh, to the type 2 DMs uh, with risk factor and profiles similar to type 2 diabetic patients. So screen, uh, screening them uh, with non-fasting triglyceride level <coughs> less than 200. We have to go for follow-up with lifestyle modification. If it is more than 200 milligram per deciliter uh, with fasting uh, lipoprotein panel, optimal uh, treatment, uh, if it is less than 100, lifestyle intervention should be advised to the patient. If it is uh, normal that is less than 150, still you are going to go for the lifestyle changes. If it is between 150 to 199, lifestyle changes along with uh, at a higher dose with then think of adding phenofibrates, omega 3s, and PCSK 9Is and appreciated. And of course, lifestyle intervention should be uh, there for these, these patients. So, the re recommendation and goals for uh, type 2 diabetic patients are uh, if the patient is having diabetic with no atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease uh, with no target organ damage it is considered as high risk and the goal of the treatment should be less than 70 milligram per deciliter and if there is target organ damage in this patient the goal of treatment should be less than uh, 50 milligram per deciliter then if the diabetic patient is with atherosclerotic cardiovascular diseases then if there is associated comorbidity, then uh, it is described as ex extreme risk patient with category A. The target goal should be less than 50 milligrams. Optimal uh, uh, goal should be less than 30, but the target should be less than 50 for th these patients. And if the patient is uh, with target organ damage with atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, then the 
a goal should be less than 30 mg per deciliter of the LDOs. So finally, uh, to conclude, ASCVD is common in patients with type 2 diabetics. So not only morbidity, but also CV mortality is also on the rise. So uh, priority is to reduce LDLC with statins, azitimide, PCSK, uh, P9I to achieve LDLC target. Attention needs to be paid to reduce triglyceride and non HDLC. Phenofibrates may play a role in reducing triglycerides with possibility benefits of reducing cardiovascular events. ICP 4 uh, grams per day has shown promising results. Then, finally, an important uh, point over here is to emphasize upon lifestyle changes over uh, the uh, treatment uh, for reducing the uh, diabetic dyslipidemia. Thank you. Yes, uh, Dr. Reddy, I think would like to say something. Hello? Yes, sir. So we have... Mm, the diabetic dyslipidemia is very, very uncommon and uh, majority of the treating diabetes are physicians uh, in the younger age of practice neglect the diabetic dyslipidemia and we, to not to forget the complications achieved by the diabetic dyslipidemia are seen by more than 70 percent of mortality are due to diabetes and uh, the, the end organ damage like blindness, security, limb amputation and so on. And uh, the targets achieved for them could be uh, trigonal per se or non-HDLC. And we have to take into consideration the, the five important landmarks to assess the epidemia. And finally, the breakthrough in the treatment are not only the conventional atrovastatin and uh, the HDMI, but it also can be uh, done by the after adding more of uh, the maximum dose of atrovastatin, the monoclonal antibodies uh, are uh, um, good in achieving the, uh, especially in uh, coronary cardiac disease the reversibility or st stagnation of the prompt plate plays an important role and uh, the, finally the Indian uh, non-HLC reductors like the, uh, the what I can say the the Indian uh, the non-HLC reductors the what is this? Uh, Saragigazar. Of course, uh, it has been tried by me also in a uh, large number of cases. But uh, as, as rightly mentioned, though there is no uh, the cardiac evidence or evidence of the cardiac benefits with the Saragigazar. So, Hence, uh, we have to go in not only the management of lifestyle, em emphasizing the lifestyle modification and the treating the uh, type 2 diabetes with the diabetic dyslipidemia throws a, a, throws a very important um, part in the management of diabetes and also recovery of the patients and uh, prevent the morbidity. I now um, request the other speakers to go ahead before we invite to the doubts in the, in the panel discussion. Okay, Sika. Uh, thank you so much, sir. And uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ludhi, for this nice presentation. Now I request thank Dr. Aban Salvan, sir, to please uh, introduce and invite Dr. Shadar Bhaman for his talk and to moderate his session. Dr. Aman Salvan, sir, please. So your voice is not coming, sir. You are not audible, sir. Sir, 
please remove your earphones, sir. Please remove your earphones. Remove it from the device. Should I exit? Yeah, yes. yeah, you know. Oh, okay, I would like to uh, invite Dr. Shada, who is a very young and dynamic cardiologist uh, working at Yeshoda Hospitals, Malakpet. And uh, he will be presenting his talk. And then I think after that, we'll have all the discussions. Welcome, Dr. Shada, to this forum. Thank you, sir. And thank you, Chairperson, and uh, moderators, and all the panelists. Uh, today, uh, we'll be uh, discussing the final topic that is LDL cholesterol, which is the culprit and target in atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. So, why is LDL cholesterol the culprit, and how was it uh, established to be a culprit in uh, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease? We have various epidemiological studies, randomized control, control trials, and uh, Mendelian randomization studies, whereas uh, also animal studies and uh, an entity called familial hypercholesterolemia. Uh, All these uh, studies and uh, this entity had uh, pointed towards LDL cholesterol being the culprit and also targeting this uh, uh, entity would lead to reduction in the uh, cardiovascular events. So this has been well established by various studies. Uh, so uh, in, if you see the mean LDL cholesterol values in meta-analysis of four trials comparing high dose statin with uh, moderate dose statin, the uh, in all the trials, the baseline uh, LDL cholesterol level was around 100 to 150, and with the standard treatment, uh, a level of around 100 was reached. And with intensive uh, treatment, a uh, 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 standard uh, uh, LDL cholesterol level of around 70 milligram per deciliter was, was reached in all the full trial, four trials. And also in the pooled uh, 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 data, it was around 70. Uh, the LDL cholesterol levels. So this again uh, led to uh, uh, the guidelines being uh, formulated, which recommended that uh, uh, LDL cholesterol level of around 70 milligram per deciliter should be achieved in patient uh, patients with uh, coronary heart disease or CSD equivalent. So this the, uh, this data came came long back in 2004. Uh, now after the uh, data was released, after this data of uh, after these recommendations were released by the ATP3. In 2004, based upon the meta-analysis of four trials, there was a significant reduction and the gradual reduction in the mortality of uh, uh, age standardized death rates attributable to cardiovascular disease from 2000 to 2010. And th this was in the US data, the Western data. There was a reduction in the uh, cardiovascular disease mortality after the release of NCP ATP3 guidelines and also the update. But however, if you see in the Indian uh, mortality, there was a significant increase in the mortality even after following the data which was released in 2004. So if you see in this Indian data, they were, which was uh, published in the Indian Heart Journal in 2018, they, there was a significant increase in the cardiovascular disease de uh, death rates and uh, also in the ischemic heart disease death rate and stroke rates in, ma ma uh, in uh, males and also in females there was a significant in, uh, uh, increase in the cardiovascular disease and ischemic heart disease death rates and also the overall death rates in both the uh, female and male genders uh, had significantly increased uh, uh, even after following this data. So why, why is there a higher propensity of CAD among Indians? Uh, even if we, when we are following all the data which was released by the Western uh, Western uh, committees and we are following the data there, so why is there a higher uh, risk of CAD and death among Indians? Because there is increased prevalence of atherogenic dyslipidemia. This term is uh, very specific for uh, South Asian populations that is uh, higher prevalence of triglycerides and low uh, prevalence of HDL cholesterol and almost normal total cholesterol and LDL cholesterol levels. So this uh, atherogenic uh, dyslipidemia has a very sim uh, important role in uh, causing CV, uh, cardiovascular disease in uh, Indian population. And there are other traditional risk factors and also the prevalence of uh, central abdominal obesity is higher in uh, uh, Indians. And Indians tend to develop risk factors at a, young, at a younger age. We see people coming at a younger age with uh, dyslipidemia, coming with the hypertension, coming with diabetes. So all the onset of all these risk factors and also smoking, all these are common at a younger age in Indian population. And along with that, there is, there is a low rate of control of hypertension, hypercholesterolemia, diabetes and smoking among Indians. So when we see there is normal or mildly raised uh, LDL cholesterol in Indians, a high triglyceride 
and uh, non hcl cholesterol and high prevalence of increased lipoprotein a and high prevalence of uh, small dense lipoprotein particles uh, so uh, when we are following the american urine, european guidelines since 1988 the whereas the mortality in western european countries has declined by around 50% the mortality in india has increased by around 42% so uh, we need to Uh, 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 formulate our own guidelines. So around uh, approximately 40% of Indi Indians uh, have CAD at, at uh, less than 40 years of age, and among those, around 25% die with the CAD at uh, are of uh, less than 40 years of age. So we also develop CAD 10 years earlier compared to the other ethnic groups, and we also tend to develop more severe CAD at a similar age. And also we have uh, a higher mortality compared to other ethnic groups. so uh, accordingly the uh, american college of cardiology has considered asian ethnic uh, group as a high risk ethnic group and along with all these factors all these are genetic factors of uh, maybe uh, some environmental factors uh, there is also along with that uh, poor awareness about cardiovascular disease and primordial prevention in indians so because of maybe because of the low awareness or low education levels the indians are not aware of uh, their uh, preventing or modifying their risk factors and our dietary pattern is also uh, very haphazard and there are no treatment guidelines for dyslipidemia till december 2014 so therefore we needed our own recommendation and based on this uh, the lipid association of india has uh, come uh, up with an expert consensus uh, document uh, which was released in uh, two parts uh, and for this they had undergone a very uh, detailed brainstorming sessions in, uh, throughout india with uh, involving experts uh, from uh, from across india and in, uh, including uh, 18 states in the part 1 and 17 states in part 2 and there were various cities involved uh, across india and they ca they came up with this document and the, uh, these recommendations uh, which was released in two parts the first part i'll be going to discuss here so the, what, what uh, the lipid association of india has just categorized patients into Uh, 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 risk categories. So, depending on the risk factors and risk markers, we have uh, the different risk categories, and then uh, how to go about uh, treating with each category. So, there are various risk matters, uh, risk factors like uh, major atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease risk uh, factors, like age more than 45 years in males or more than or equal to 55 years in females, and the family history of premature uh, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, which is defined as more than uh, 55 years in a first degree lady with, of uh, who is a male. and uh, more than 65 years in a first degree relative who's a female and then current cigarette smoking or uh, tobacco use a high blood pressure which is defined as more than 140 more than or equal to 140 by 90 and low hcl cholesterol levels which is defined as less than 40 in males and less than 15 in females so these five are the major atherosclerotic risk factors then there are other high risk factors like diabetes with one or uh, zero uh, with uh, one or more uh, other uh, uh, major risk factors and there is with no evidence of target organ damage and ckd with the stage of uh, stage 3b or 4 and familial hypercholesteremia as already uh, highlighted by another speaker that how important it is to identify this uh, entity called familial hypercholesteremia uh, and uh, there are other non conventional risk factors like coronary calcium score of more than 300 non steroidic carotid plaque and lipoprotein a levels of more than or equal to 50 mg per deciliter and there are other moderate risk factors all these were high risk factors and now we are, co are coming to the moderate risk factors which are with a non conventional like coronary calcium score of 100 to 299 Uh, or increase the carotid intima medial thickness or lipoprotein level uh, from uh, 20 to 49 mg per deciliter and metabolic syndrome so according to the all these uh, high risk features and uh, uh, risk factors we, they have categorized uh, patients into low risk moderate risk high risk and very high risk so patients belonging to low risk category have uh, uh, no or one major atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease risk factor and a lifetime cvd risk of less than 30% So patient belonging to moderate risk have two uh, major uh, risk factors atherosclerotic cardiovascular uh, disease risk factors and a low risk group with more or uh, one or more uh, moderate risk non conventional risk factor like coronary calcium score of uh, 100 to 299 or a in increase uh, carotid intima medial thickness or a lipoprotein level of 20 to 49 or a high metabolic syndrome and a lifetime uh, cardiovascular uh, disease risk of more than or equal to 30% so high risk patients have three or more uh, major risk factors Uh, or they have two or more major risk factors which is more than or uh, one uh, more than or equal to one moderate risk non conventional risk factor and uh, or else they may have uh, one or more other high risk uh, features and there is a category where the, the risk is very high uh, which people having pre existing atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease which is uh, documented cad 
or a documented uh, myocardial infarction or uh, a peripheral vascular disease or uh, a documented cerebrovascular event uh, or patients uh, having diabetes with uh, more than or equal to two major atherosclerotic uh, uh, diseases factors or evidence of target organ damage and uh, the entity which is the familial hyper, uh, homozygous hyperglycemia this also comes under very high risk as highlighted by the previous speaker so uh, and for calculating all this risk the, the uh, uh, lipid association of india suggests the jbs3 risk calculator uh, for assessing the lifetime risk assessment so according to the uh, guidelines released in the first part there are various treatment goals and the treatment uh, the target goals which were uh, recommended in very high risk category which uh, we have already seen which uh, prior documented uh, myocardial infarction or prior cardiovascular event or diabetes with uh, uh, more uh, than two is factors the target uh, of ldl cholesterol recommended is less than 50 mg per deciliter and a non hcl cholesterol should also be less than 80 mg per deciliter and high risk uh, group should uh, uh, be targeted to ldl cholesterol of less than 70 moderate risk uh, should be targeted uh, targeted to less than 100 and low risk also should be targeted to 100 so when should be consider uh, a drug therapy uh, starting uh, statins in uh, these patients uh, in a very high risk group uh, uh, preferably should be given in all patients but i but even uh, if not possible then at least in patients uh, who are having a ldl cholesterol of more than 50 and uh, uh, in high risk group also preferably all should be given uh, statins to reduce the ldl cholesterol to less than 70 and in the moderate risk group uh, when the ldl cholesterol level is more than 70 more than or equal to 100 or in the lower risk group it is uh, should be given uh, when uh, the ldl cholesterol is more than or equal to 130 after and uh, all these are uh, recommended uh, apart from uh, patients who are already having a uh, prior documented uh, cardiovascular event an initial initial adequate non pharmacological intervention should be given for at least 3 months in all the patients so uh, how do we justify all these recommendations what are the uh, various uh, methods and various uh, trials which were followed and uh, what the data was collected and uh, uh, how 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 did the experts come to the uh, recommendation of uh, having a ldl cholesterol level of less than 50 as a target in very high risk uh, population uh, there was a meta analysis of eight sudden trials which showed that as uh, when you take 175 uh, mg per deciliter as a target as the baseline ldl cholesterol as the uh, ldl cholesterol uh, was the lower the ldl cholesterol achieved the higher the Uh, reduction in the major uh, cardiovascular events was seen so even from uh, if you see in this uh, uh, table when the ldl cholesterol was uh, reduced from 100 to less than 50 there was an additional 90 19% uh, reduction in the major uh, cardiovascular events and uh, another uh, uh, improved trial which showed that uh, the primary endpoint of cardiovascular death non fatal mi or non fatal stroke was significantly lower in patients who achieve Uh, LDL cholesterol of 53 versus 70 mg per deciliter at one year, with a number needed to treat as as low as 56 and a p-value of which is very significant of 0.003. So this trial also showed that if you achieve a, a LDL cholesterol of, of around 50, there was significant uh, reduction in the cardiovascular events. Then another trial which was uh, uh, studied and which uh, uh, prompted the experts to uh, come to the conclusion of uh, uh, lowering LDL cholesterol to less than 50. was the odc outcome trial uh, in which the pcsk9 inhibitor of lirocumab was studied in patients post acs of around 1 to 12 months where they were included after a run in period of 2 to 16 weeks on high intensity statin and then they were randomized to either lirocumab or placebo so in this uh, uh, study also uh, achieved ldl cholesterol of around 50 mg per deciliter had a 15% reduction in the major end, uh, cardiovascular endpoints so again this trial also showed that that achieving Uh, LDL cholesterol of less than 50 was uh, uh, showed a significant uh, reduction in cardiovascular events. So uh, this <coughs> what is the outcome trial published in 2018 after the LA recommendation that is in 2016. So this trial was published in 2018. This also endorsed the that lowering LDL cholesterol to less than 50 uh, uh, resulted in major uh, adverse cardiovascular event reduction, uh, which was very significant. So again. the last year uh, in uh, 2019 we had european uh, guidelines from the uh, european institute of cardiology they also again suggested that in very high uh, risk groups the target uh, goal of ldl cholesterol should be around 50 and in high risk group it should be around 70 again endorsing the uh, uh, findings uh, and the recommendations of the lipid association of india 
so the goal uh, this was proposed way back in 2016 uh, that the ldl cholesterol levels of less than 50 should be the target Uh, so is it sufficient uh, that achieving uh, uh, ldl cholesterol level of 50 is it sufficient is it going to eliminate all the cardiovascular risk but i am afraid to say that it does not uh, eliminate the entire risk so this study that improve it uh, in the improve it trial this show that over 6 years even after the cardiovascular uh, event reduction of around 34% there was uh, a significant residual risk of around 32% even after achieving LDL cholesterol level of 50. So this significant residual risk is again responsible for increased events which we see uh, in patients who are already receiving statin therapies and uh, still do not have a uh, control of LDL cholesterol. So now we have to reevaluate our ta LDL targets. So was 50 mg per deciliter sufficient, or we need to have another goal in patients who are at very high risk? So the lower the uh, LDL cholesterol level achieved, the greater the reduction in cardiovascular disease risk was seen. clinicians need to start reevaluating targets for ldl cholesterol with uh, for patients who are at very high risk so we need to see whether uh, reducing ldl cholesterol levels to less than 30 uh, where data has shown benefit uh, whether is is it possible or is it feasible and uh, what should be a recommendation so again depending on this uh, 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 for formulating guidelines for this again the lai uh, conducted a series of 19 meetings uh, in uh, march 2020 and then they came up with their recommendation with, uh, uh, with pro proposing new uh, ldl cholesterol level goals for patients for secondary prevention and patients having familial hypercholesterolemia with focus on uh, pcsk9 inhibitors so again uh, according uh, the previous guidelines previous recommendations had shown us the various categories so in that uh, uh, recommendation there were two two uh, categories were uh, added which is uh, where which were classified as having extreme uh, high risk that is patients having uh, uh, cad with known cad with more than or equal to one feature of very high risk uh, of high risk group or uh, patients having uh, uh, cad with or patients having cad with uh, very uh, more than or equal to one feature of very high risk group so category a was uh, cad with one or uh, more feature of high risk group and category b was uh, uh, more than or one feature of very high risk group or rec recurrent acs within one year despite having a ldl cholesterol uh, level of 50 uh, if the patients develop recurrent acs then they were categorized uh, they were included in the category b so in these two categories that is category a and category b belonging to extreme high risk group a new target was suggested that is less than 50 uh, in a category a with an optional goal of less than 30 and uh, in category b the which is uh, patients having very high risk uh, such as patients having recurrent uh, acs or uh, very uh, high uh, very high risk features uh, then they were advised to have a uh, target of ldl cholesterol less than 30 and they should be started on uh, drug therapy with uh, ldl cholesterol more than 30 so the treatment protocol for uh, So the treatment protocol for very high risk uh, uh, the category and extreme high, uh, high risk uh, atherosclerotic vascular disease uh, risk category we have uh, uh, patients should be on optimal control of uh, diabetes and hypertension and along with uh, high intensity statin they should also be a reinforcement of lifestyle measures and then uh, and then uh, patient belong to very high risk category we should assess whether the ldl cholesterol level is more than 50 and if it is more than 50 then adding azithromycin is a uh, recommended option and even if the ldl cholesterol remains more than 50 uh, even after adding ezetimib then we have to consider PC pcsk9 inhibitors with a target uh, level of ldl cholesterol less than 50 and in patient with the extreme high risk group that is uh, having both categories one a and b uh, assess whether the ldl cholesterol level is more than uh, 50 then add ezetimib as a second option then assess whether the, if it is still remains more than 50 then adding uh, pcsk9 inhibitor to uh, reduce uh, uh, ldl cholesterol to a goal of uh, less than 50 in category a with an optional of uh, 30 mg per deciliter and in category b consider uh, pcsk9 inhibitors to uh, achieve a ldl cholesterol level of less than 30 so how do we justify this uh, new target of uh, ldl cholesterol of less than 30 what were the trials which were studied and how how did the experts go about formulating this uh, uh, this recommendation of ldl cholesterol of less than 30 so uh, depending on this trial which is the four year trial 
in which uh, uh, the major cardiovascular uh, uh, events uh, like mi stroke or hospitalization for uh, uh, acute coronary syndromes or coronary revascularization was significantly reduced from around 14% to 12.6% with a significant p value of less than 0.001 uh, when the median ldl cholesterol achieved was 30 from the, from the baseline 93 so this uh, this trial is a very important uh, uh, trial which showed that achieving a ldl cholesterol level of 30 was very significant <coughs> now efficacy of uh, in intensive lowering of ldl cholesterol in subjects with low baseline ldl cholesterol so meta analysis of around 1000 participants and more than 2 years to uh, treatment uh, duration of more versus less intense uh, sudden trials involving more than around 1.5 lakh subjects show that even baseline uh, cholesterol ldl cholesterol was less than 70 even if it was less than 70 an additional reduction of around 39 mg percent that is uh, an additional reduction of around 30 mg percent uh, demonstrated a major uh, adverse cardiovascular event reduction of around 37% which is a significant p value so again the improved trial also showed that 20 21% reduction in mace uh, in patients who achieved ldl cholesterol less than 30 uh, mg per deciliter at one month compared to those already uh, having 70 or greater So even if uh, patients were having 70 mg per deciliter of LDL cholesterol, further reduction of uh, to less than 30 was uh, had showed a significant uh, 21% reduction in major adverse cardiovascular events. So I, I, and again, this uh, uh, why was this benefit seen? Because there was a significant reduction in the percent atheroma uh, volume, uh, and uh, also there was a significant fraction showing regression in, of the uh, uh, lipid plaques in the GLAGO trial. so uh, again uh, now uh, we'll discuss about why how can we justify extreme uh, risk uh, group how how do we justify the recommendation in extreme risk group in this uh, uh, graph in this diagram we can see that patients having diabetes that is the red uh, uh, bar uh, compared when you compare to the green bar that is without diabetes so with patients having diabetes are classified as very high risk group uh, so uh, compared to the patients having low risk when we see with a, a very high risk group that is with diabetes and other risk factors there was a significant uh, reduction in the abs absolute risk, uh, reduction in the improve it and uh, four year trial and also in the odc outcome trial with a lesser number to uh, treat compared to the uh, low risk category so when you see there was a significant absolute reduction uh, risk reduction uh, when the ldl cholesterol was uh, less than 30 compared to uh, low risk groups and with a with the very uh, few number uh, needed to treat uh, in the very high risk groups so there was additional benefit and uh, there have been very uh, various concerns regarding the use of or uh, safety of uh, pcs kinase inhibitors and whether very very low ldl cholesterol will be associated with any side effects so there was no side effects uh, there was similar uh, uh, amounts there was similar uh, reactions or uh, adverse effects compared to the placebo Uh, with both alirocumab and nivolumab, uh, whereas uh, also very low LDL cholesterol uh, was not associated with uh, risk of new onset diabetes compared uh, with matched uh, patients from the passive placebo group, or also there was no association of very low LDL cholesterol with uh, neurocognitive uh, cognitive effects or hemorrhagic stroke. <coughs> so to conclude, we are born with a LDL cholesterol of around 30 milligram per deciliter. Uh, so hunter gatherers had low uh, cholesterol with very low prevalence of CAD. Indians are unique, and as a unique uh, ethnographic class, we need to have our own guidelines and own our own recommendations, and uh, also we need to follow our own uh, people with, uh, with, new, uh, with further reduction in cholesterol cardiovascular disease. So, by following such uh, strict uh, recommendations, we may uh, we may uh, try to achieve further reduction in the cardiovascular mortality, which is a distant dream, but still, uh, Lipid Association of India may be. by following the guidelines we can achieve uh, a reduction in the cardiovascular disease mortality and also uh, we may prevent uh, uh, the uh, uh, we may prevent onset of uh, cardiovascular disease also at a younger age so however the final decision should also follow a detailed discussion between patient and the treating physician when we advise the patients to take uh, medicine for life long so there should be a detailed discussion because only through a detailed discussion we can uh, convince the patient regarding the benefits and uh, regarding their uh, use so again to summarize uh, the, the various risk categories and uh, the various targets 
with an extreme uh, risk uh, group having uh, uh, should be targeted to a LDA cholesterol level of less than 30 and uh, very high risk group of less than 50, high risk group of less than 70 and low to moderate risk uh, can be targeted to LDA cholesterol of uh, less than 100. Uh, thank you for your kind attention. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Shadab, sir, for this nice and excellent talk. Uh, now I uh, request Dr. Ayangar, sir, to please moderate the key messages on all the three topics by LA faculty. Dr. Ayangar, sir, please. Thank you. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I thank all the speakers uh, for their excellent presentations. Now I request my LA colleagues to say a few words on each of these topics, starting with Dr. Raman Puri on uh, LDL cholesterol followed by Dr. Nasingam, and I'll say a few words about FH. Dr. Nasingam, uh, Dr. Raman Puri. Uh. Thank you, Dr. Anger. And uh, it was really a great presentation by all the three speakers, and I really compliment them. Uh, Dr. Ahmed very elegantly explained uh, the justification of uh, uh, lowering LDL cholesterol to less than 30 milligrams and uh, he even justified the need for uh, extreme risk category and uh, i think that uh, 30 milligram level uh, someone of you still have a doubt that should be uh, really it is needed or not and how to achieve it so i'll add some more points that uh, why expert uh, in this consensus thought of uh, number 30 and uh, what was the basis for extreme risk category we all know that coronary artery disease, all coronary artery disease patients do not behave in the same way. Uh, someone comes back to us with uh, recurrent uh, CV events uh, in a short time and others uh, uh, takes a longer time to come back or few never come back, they remain stable. Uh, this can be very nicely explained on this study and here uh, it was patients with uh, uh, previous MI uh, three year maze in the form of CV death, MI, or ischemic stroke was only 3.5% when none of these risk indicators was present. And when seven of these risk indicators was present, the 59% of patients came back with the recurrence. If I apply these risk indicators in patients with the uh, improved IT trial, uh, and uh, uh, I can classify these patients into three groups uh, the high risk group intermediate risk group and low risk group. You can see here that in high risk group patients, there were more events, number one, and uh, there was a greater reduction in events uh, as compared to intermediate risk group and low risk group. And despite uh, achieving mean LDL cholesterol of 53, still 33.9% of these patients had events. Means high risk patients who were greatly benefited but they still had a high events with mean LDL, achieved LDL cholesterol of 59. And if you look into the NNT, uh, for uh, a high risk NNT was 16, means the number needed to treat to prevent event was 16. For intermediate, it was 46. And for low risk, it is 111. Based upon international uh, lipid expert panel, uh, absolute risk reduction of uh, more than 3.2 and an NNT of less than 30 is significant. Those patients of uh, uh, post ACS patient with type 2 diabetes and polyvascular disease had 9% absolute risk reduction and NNT of 11. So these were patients which were really extremely, uh, you know, extreme risk group category B uh, because there was a great benefit and NNT was just 11. Now, if I apply these uh, TMI risk score in patients with Fourier trial, uh, again, we have a high risk group, and in this high risk group, absolute risk reduction was 3.6, and NNT was 28. Means uh, with the mean LDL cholesterol of 30 milligram, there were still 15.5% of the patients had events. Uh, so that shows that um, uh, the, the, these patients were really in a, uh, you know, uh, you can say it as an extreme risk category B, which even uh, had more events despite having a mean LDL cholesterol of 30 milligram. Now I'll try to justify uh, uh, number 30, uh, as Dr. Ahmed has already said that four year trial, the mean LDL cholesterol was 30 milligram from 93. 
And if you look into some of the post hoc analysis or the C outcome trial, post hoc analysis have shown that patients in which the LDL cholesterol was reduced from 73 to 15, there was 29% reduction in the cardiovascular events. And even in a four year trial, those patients, 2000 patients who had basal LDL cholesterol of 70, when it was reduced to 20 milligram, uh, then the, there was about 30% reduction in the event. Uh, he has talked about CTT meta-analysis and improved IT trial, but there is another meta-analysis of non-statin trial. With 50,000 patients, there were 22% reduction in event by, uh, with reduction of uh, LDL cholesterol from 63 milligram to 21 milligram. If you look into all cause death according to achieved LDL cholesterol in the alurcomab group, this is an Odyssey outcome trial. You can see at the level of 31 milligram of uh, LDL cholesterol, you have the minimum mortality. And another thing which you can find out that those patients who have high baseline LDL cholesterol, they have a greater benefit in reduction in mortality as compared to those who had lower LDL cholesterol, basal LDL cholesterol level. Full term fetus have mean LDL cholesterol of uh, 28 milligram and neonate, they have, we have LDL cholesterol of uh, 32 milligram. And there was a paper by uh, Brown and Goldstein in uh, 1985, in which, uh, uh, according to them, the level of LDL cholesterol in plasma of 25 milligram would be sufficient to nourish blood cell with cholesterol. The physiological level was about 25 milligram. Now, uh, after this, uh, number 30 will uh, try to, uh, you know, give you, uh, will explain to you how we create, came to extreme risk category A and B. Now, uh, the basis for this uh, category was uh, uh, ASCVD risk, uh, 10 year AS, ASCVD risk, if it is between 20 to 29 percent, the patient was classified as very high risk group. When the, it was 30 to 39 percent, it was category A, and when it was more than 40, it was category B. Now, uh, problem is this there are, there are so many morbidities with coronary artery disease, it will be extremely difficult for you to group them into um, uh, into uh, category A and B to simplify it so that there is no confusion and you can place your patient comfortably in which group the patient should be. Having this algorithm uh, in which uh, you have high risk group and very high risk group, those patients of coronary artery disease with one or more features of uh, high risk group is category A and those with one or more features with uh, coronary artery, uh, very high risk group is category B. So these are uh, the basis for our uh, um, classifying patients into extreme, cat extreme category A and B. Now let us discuss about some international guidelines because uh, ACC also came out with um, guidelines in 2018. And uh, uh, normally ACC doesn't recommend uh, targets because they believe in threshold rather than target. In this uh, uh, very high risk category of ASCVD, uh, they recommended that those who have an LDL cholesterol more than 70 on maximal tolerated statin and azetomide therapy, one should add PCSK9. So you can just imagine that majority of patients, majority of patients, first majority of patients will achieve LDL cholesterol uh, um, if you give high intensity statin and azetomide to less than 50 milligram. But even if you presume that for your patient have LDL cholesterol of more than uh, around 80 milligram. If I add PCSK9, it will come down to LDL will come down to 30 milligram or 35 milligram. So indirectly, ACC also uh, you know recommends lowering LDL cholesterol down to 30 milligram or 35 milligram. Now, as per European guidelines, they they have a recommended goal of less than 55 in patient with ASCVD. Absolutely correct. Uh, this is what we did in 2016. But they have have another recommendation that those patients with recurrent ACS, the LDL recommended is less than 40. We have recommended LDL cholesterol less than 30. From where this 40 number has come, I have given you a justification of number 30. There are a number of you know scientific evidence, but we have failed to find out from where this number 40 has come. If someone of you know about this, then of course we will discuss it during this, you know after this uh, our talk. Now, as far as safety is concerned, now we have five years, uh, uh, you know, PCSK9 trial, OSLR1, which shows that there are no significant adverse effects because of either PCSK9 or because of lower LDL cholesterol um, uh, with PCSK9. And of course, we have 
enough experience with high intensity statin for almost three decades, azetamide for two decades, and we know that it is a very safe drug. And as we know that 6% of patients in improved IT trial had LDL cholesterol less than 30, 2% of patients in four-year trial had LDL cholesterol of less than 10, mean of 7, and about 730 patients of uh, Odyssey outcome trial had LDL cholesterol of less than 15. In none of these patients, you know, uh, there was any uh, increase in hemorrhagic stroke or neurocognitive dysfunction or new, set, new onset of uh, diabetes. So it's, it's safe to have LDL cholesterol of 30. And so I'll just recommend that those you try to classify your patient into category A and B and those with category B, it is very safe to bring down LDL cholesterol to less than 30. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Raman. Uh, may I request Dr. Nasingan to yeah. have his comments, please? Evening, everyone. All three speakers had done a wonderful job. Thank you very much. Let me now take you to the diabetes distributing part. Already, this was covered by the speaker, Dr. Mansoor. But I would like to emphasize one important message. Fasting lipid profile is required for patients whom you like to have a follow-up of this LDL cholesterol for reaching the goal. It can be in the fasting state or it can be done by a direct method by which you can identify the exact levels of LDL cholesterol. The second one is a postprandial Hypertriglyceridemia is a big problem seen in people with diabetes. We need to probably take this into account. We are talking about the non-fasting samples. Postprandial hypertriglyceridemia has been a problem seen in people with established coronary artery disease compared to people without coronary artery disease. This was projected in the year 1992. You can appreciate that the levels of triglycerides are going up from two hours to four hours, four hours to six hours at the end, eight hours only it settles down. So we need to keep this in mind whenever we talk about the residual risk. The next thing that I think uh, the speaker has already covered is important point. I don't want to dwell here. Suffice to say that people with established coronary artery disease, complicating diabetes, in whom you have a polyvascular disease, or people in whom you have more than three risk factors operating or people in whom the targetary damage has occurred, those people require less than 30 milligram. That is the recommendation that we have been repeatedly emphasizing. Now let us go to this important message that we got it from 2018 ACC AHA guidelines. Before I start talking about these two recommendations, I should tell you that the Lipid Association of India differs from ACC AHA guidelines. We know very well that the epidemic of diabetes is witnessed by all of us in our country. We know that the obesity is increasing. We know that the metabolic syndrome is on the rise. The recent study which was published clearly indicated that 33.3% of men and 40% of women are seen to be having all the constellation of risk factors. The earliest abnormality that occurs in people with metabolic syndrome is so-called atherogenic dyslipidemia. In association with the pro-inflammatory and the pro coagulant factors, this precipitates an atherosclerotic cardiovascular event in these individuals. Not only the morbidity, but also the mortality due to ACVD is on the rise in people with the metabolic syndrome. If you look at the blood sugar values in this group of people, either it may be impaired fasting glucose or impaired glucose tolerance, they probably may not be having a categoric diabetes. To develop a categoric diabetes, these people will take at least a minimum of five years, maximum of 10 years to get into categoric diabetes. So these individuals, should they have the so-called pre-diabetes and their vascular territories are all affected by the so-called culprits of pathogenic dyslipidemia. So if they have a higher frequency of ASCVD, higher frequency of death in these individuals, why not we? probably apply the same principles in people with diabetes also saying that they are at a very, very high risk. Talking to people with diabetes is very important about 
the necessity to start them on a static therapy. The moment you make a diagnosis of diabetes on the day first itself, I think we have fully justified and recommending a statin therapy during that time. Not necessary to wait till the people reach the age of 40 years, not necessary to wait till 20 to 39 years of age and have an additional risk factor to start a statin as has been recommended by 2018 guidelines. This is one important message what I thought I should probably give it to you on behalf of Liquid Association of India. Now, the first category between 40 and 75 years of age, if the LDL cholesterol is more than 70, you put the patient on a moderate intensity statin therapy. That was the first recommendation. If you use moderate statin therapy, you expect the patient to bring down the LDL by 40%. Suppose, for example, a patient with a diabetes who has got 100 milligrams of LDL cholesterol, which is 60 milligrams. What we have recommended in the year 2016, it was 70 milligrams for people who were very high risk. High risk. The second point is that people with the diabetes who are at a very high risk, between 50 and 70 years, reasonable to start high dose statin to have a reduction of LDL cholesterol more than 50%. Now, in this case, if you use a high dose statin therapy, you will probably bring down the LDL cholesterol by 55 milligrams per cent. That means a person who has a baseline LDL cholesterol of 100 milligrams, for example, he will touch 45 milligrams at the end of the treatment. That's the goal. That has been recommended by Lipid Association of India way back 2016 itself. So we were very far out, far ahead of all these academic bodies to talk about the so-called levels of LDL cholesterol for high risk as well as very high risk group of people in diabetes. This is the last slide how the European Society and the Lipid Association of India differ. For example, the first group, extreme of a single factor, your blood pressure, smoking, or LDL cholesterol more than 190. European Society in the year 2016 brought it down to levels of 100 mg as a goal. Same here, Lipid Association of India gave the message that it should be less than 70. Last year, Euro revised it, said 70. We continue to advise the same 70 milligram, even our 2020 recommendation. That's number one. Number two, people with the diabetes with no target organ damage, for whom the recommendation earlier was 100 in 2016, but the same year, we brought it down to the levels of 70. We continue to recommend the same thing. The European society has brought it down to levels of 70. Diabetes with the target organ damage, already highlighted by the speakers also, the law recommended less than 50, but whereas European society in the year 2016 said less than 70. Now last year, they brought it down to the levels of 55. However, we try to keep the same levels even in our 2020 recommendation. People with established ACVD already highlighted by the speakers. I don't want to dwell there. Yet another introduction of entity called concurrent ACS complicating another ACS, that means people should bring down the LDL cholesterol to less than 40. That is a recommendation given by European society. But here is the problem for Lipid Association. We are now trying to emphasize that these people should probably bring down the LDL cholesterol to less than 30 milligram. Yet another important message that I would like to share is that we have introduced a category called extreme risk group and we have divided the extreme risk group into A and B category, which was not recommended by any of the other societies across the globe. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for patient listening. Thank you, Dr. Nasingan, for your comments. Now, I would like to say a few words on uh, our familial hypercholesterolemia. Uh, Dr. Nasingan, would you kindly unshare your... Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. I'm sorry, sir. I did it. Uh, Dr. Christopher has uh, uh, clearly and elegantly presented the, uh, the facts about familial hypercholesterolemia. I would like to add a few more points to his uh, good talk. Uh, 
we know that if it disorder effect movement time are you able to see the slides yes sir yes sir please proceed sir so if it is the most common monogenic uh, autosomal disorder affecting the mankind and uh, dr christopher has told us clearly about the screen but if somebody has a family history of uh, fh or a history of premature cad please do the screening earlier and while doing the screening please include serum lpa in estimation for so serum lpa doesn't change throughout your life and at least once in a lifetime this should be done so that we know the patient is at risk so also it should be done because it adds to the risk of fh like other factors which uh, dr christopher mentioned lipoprotein a levels if it is high it will increase the risk of uh, familial hypercholesterolemia or ascvd the elevation of lpa is uh, frequently seen along with the levels in you know, familial cholesterol in patients with fh both fh and elevated lpa independently correlate with premature onset of ascvd patients manifesting both conditions experience double hit genetic basis for these two lipoprotein abnormalities are distinct and mechanistically separate also please remember that reducing ldl cholesterol does not attenuate the risk for developing cad secondary to lpa and uh, what is lpa lpa is nothing but an ldl like particle it gets the pob stuff over there it gets attached by a disulfide link to apoa apoa has a structural homology with plasminogen that's what makes it uh, thrombogenic and these uh, things the proteins they are called kringles because they resemble, resemble a danish pastry and the number of kringles varies from 2 to 40 so we'll have a number of isoforms of lpa and uh, please remember when you measure what we get in reports from the lab ldl cholesterol it measures cholesterol that is present in ldl as well as lpa when you do by beta quantification you see that ldl will have both ldl and lpa cholesterol and ldl cholesterol here by feedward population it includes cholesterol in ldl and in lpa now if you try to look search for the fh literature in india when you hit you with these various things first that comes is the uh, family uh, hypercholesterolemia registry by lai which we have started which has been edited to already by dr nasinger another thing i want you to see is uh, uh, there is an observation study where they studied 635 patients with premature cad 15% of them were diagnosed to have definite or probable familial hypercholesterolemia <laughs> Now the drugs for FH have already been mentioned. Uh, just to complete the list, uh, this is a recent study where they looked again uh, uh, in patients, uh, pediatric patients with heterozygous familial hypercholesterolemia, age group of between 10 and 17 years, where rivaroxaban was tried. It brought down the LDL cholesterol significantly at the end of 24 weeks. So if you look at these use of statins and estimab was in a very small percentage of patients. which is not again ideal we also talked about evinucumab uh, a drug which targets the ngptl uh, this drug is getting a priority review by fda early next year so that be used in patients with foh uh, family homozygous family hypercholesterolemia just to point here the drugs like pcsk9 inhibitors and incitlisiran will not work if there are no ldl receptors that will work even in the total absence of ldl receptors so this is the uh, recommendation by lai for treatment goal for ldl cholesterol in patients with fh patients with uh, heterozygous fh comes in high risk ldl goal is less than 70 mg per deciliter patients with homozygous fh will come under very high risk the ldl goal is less than 50 mg per cent but if they have ACVD along with uh, their family hypercholesterolemia they come under the new risk category created by LDL and uh, LAI that is the extreme risk category A and B where the goal will be 50 or 30 mg per deciliter of LDL 
uh, LA activities of FH again, Dr. Nassingh and I has mentioned about it. But just to add uh, one more thing, LA is uh, going to start on the trial international phase three study in the country. And uh, it's going to coordinate this international study in India. And we are going to try out a new anti-PSK CSK9 recombinant fusion protein, which reduces LDL cholesterol by 70% very safely. And this is going to be compared with a uh, standard PCSK9 inhibitor like Eurocumab or Eurocumab in a crossover study to find out its uh, efficacy and safety in patients who have HYFH. If this drug is approved in future, it is planned to provide this drug free of cost to those who participate in this study for the next three years. So those who are interested in this study, please contact Leia. Now coming to a few words about LPA, these are the recommendations that are going to be from LAI. Uh, we should use an isoform insensitive assay for LPA measurement and not, soft, not fasting sample will do, may not be a fasting sample and a fresh sample is preferred. We must treat other risk factors optimally to counter multiplicative risk of raised LPA. If LPA is more than 20 mg per deciliter, there is increased ACVD risk. If it is between 20 and 49 mg per deciliter, there is a moderate risk factor. And if it is more than 50 mg, it is a high risk feature. As I mentioned, we require initial screening for all at the age of 18 years, but do it earlier if there is a family history of um, FH or premature coronary artery disease. It should be estimated in patients who have premature ACVD, patients who have familial hypercholesterolemia, patients who have or subjects who have family history of premature CVD and or elevated LPA. Those who experience recurrent ACVD despite optimal lipid lowering treatment. Those who show poor response or less than anticipated or expected response to maximal lipid lowering therapy or LD lowering therapy, LPA should be estimated. Those who have ischemic stroke of uncertain etiology in the younger age group and those who have caspicotic acidosis. Uh, this will help us to understand what is the LPA problem in our country and we are going to soon have drugs which are going to be effective in reducing LPA levels. Though at present we have only PCSK9 inhibitors which reduce LPA only in about 25 percent. In conclusion, sir, chairman, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please don't forget to take family history of early cardiac events in all the subjects and patients you come across, and look at his lipid panel, including LPA. If LDL cholesterol is high, these two will point towards a diagnosis to be considered as FH. FH is different because you never find an individual with FH, you always find a family. Thank you. Now with this, uh, I just want to put uh, three points. Uh, uh, I would like to invite comments from the chairpersons and moderators and the speakers of this session about three points. One is LAI has created an extreme risk category A and B. Uh, do you have any comments on that? And we also have identified the codes as 50 and 30 milligram per deciliter. So do you have any comments on that? And secondly, Dr. Messingen mentioned the diabetics. The day you diagnose diabetes, even if it's below the age of 40, it doesn't have any of these factors, we should start on in statin. It is, should be universally screened all our patients for EPA and POP. With this, I uh, open the for our discussion. And we, any comments? So we have um, questions in the chat box, sir. Yeah. Uh, there is one question uh, from uh, Dr. Raghu. Uh, why is that serum homocysteine levels are never considered in all the lipid guidelines? I find it an important factor in patients with a positive family history. Uh, I will say something, then the others could comment on that. Homocysteine hypothesis has not been validated. Though we know that homocysteine, high levels of homocysteine makes the patient or subjects prone to clotting phenomena, both in venous system and the arterial system. 
We also that know that giving uh, B in folic acid will bring it down, but we don't know whether it will improve the outcome. So that's why it has not been included in the uh, risk assessment. Any other comments from others? Uh, are welcome. Dr. Nasingan, Dr. Raman, about homocysteine. I think uh, we can request Dr. Raghu and uh, In fact, uh, other moderators and chat. Other chat from Dr. Raghu. So I have one question, sir. I'm Dr. Jain. Yeah. So I, I have posted my question. So, like, for example, somebody is having uh, LDL of hundred, and then we give statins, and the LDL has come to eighty. Now, if you reduce this LDL from 80 by adding agitamide uh, to LDL 50, adding agitamide has not shown reduction in cardiovascular events, MACE. So, would you recommend now adding agitamide here for reduction or you directly tell them to go for adding uh, PCSK9 inhibitor? Because PCSK9 have shown that reduction in coronary events. No, oh, azetimab has shown reduction, improve it trial has shown clearly. But it's not very, it's not mace, sir. It's not uh, it's not reduction, mortality is not there, like how statins have shown, and uh, it's very small number for an improve it. Uh, no, in, in case you see uh, in case you see it reduces known fetal myocardial infarction and even the stroke by 21 percent. Uh, it's not the mortality which is important, it is the morbidity which is also important. Having stroke, it is better to die than to have stroke. You know. So, 21% reduction, not only 21% reduction in stroke, but it has been in diabetic patients. In improved IT trial, the stroke reduction was around 39%. Sir, your voice is a little uh, low, sir. I don't know why. No, can you hear me now, sir? Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, so, uh, in uh, improved IT trial, adding, you know, azetamide and bringing down LDL cholesterol to 53, there was significant reduction in non-fatal myocardial infarction and stroke. And stroke reduction was around 21%. If you take the first event, and if you take the total event, it was about 24%. And in a diabetic patient, stroke reduction was around 39%. And those patients who had a prior stroke had had about 48% stroke reduction. So I think stroke is a very major disability and nobody will like to have stroke. So there is a definite reduction in CV event. And uh, as far as mortality is concerned, uh, uh, it will be a quite a late feature because your basal LDL cholesterol was less than 90. And uh, because if you look into the ODC trial, uh, outcome trial, it has clearly shown that there was uh, those patients who had basal LDL cholesterol of more than 100, they had a greater significant reduction in mortality as compared to those in which LDL cholesterol was less than 100 milligram. So it is not only mortality which is important, morbidity is equally important. You know, So uh, I think that uh, the job, uh, because azetamide reduces LDL cholesterol just by 15 to 20 percent, not more. So I think it has done its, uh, its role pretty well uh, justify using it and, and second uh, if you give high intensity statin with basal ldl cholesterol of uh, 100 uh, normally it reduces ldl cholesterol by a high intensity statin by 55 percent so if somebody is uh, uh, you have to see to it that you are giving high intensity statin like uh, 40 or 80 milligram of a torval statin or 20 to 40 milligram of rosal statin uh, if somebody has only 20 uh, milligram reduction with high intensity statin, so he is a non responder to statin. So, here you have to look into the reasons why patient has not responded to high intensity statin. Make sure that patient is on high intensity statin. I'm sure that if you give a high intensity statin plus azetamide, there will be at least 65% reduction in LDL cholesterol. So, we will definitely have about 45 milligram of LDL cholesterol if the basal LDL cholesterol is 100 milligram. I, mean, I think uh, even the Fourier study didn't show mortality benefit. Yeah, and the yes. trail, what it showed is still a disputable uh, fact because that was hierarchically the low down in the list. The first two second end points did not show benefit. The third was that mortality which showed benefit. Then you can't take it as a fact, even in ODC trial. 
So even, 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 no, even, sir, even, even, sir, even, even, sir, 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 even, I think, sir, reduction of non-fatal myocardial infarction and stroke is definitely an important. Uh, yeah, they're very important because we do we look at even the quality of life. Quality of life. Only yeah. at the mortality, and these two pieces can of course be short-term studies. We'll have to wait for longer period if at all they show any mortality. But I think ideally, starting after that is demand they must. Then you add, think of adding pieces can of because of. Even there's a doubtful mortality benefit and the cost. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, I would like. Hi, sir. This is uh, Dr. Aman Salwan here. I just would like to. Am I audible yeah. to everybody? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, okay. Yes. Fine. Uh, regarding PCSK nine, I would really like a frank opinion from the chairperson and all our senior endocrinologists and cardiologists. How many of us have really used it in the Indian setting? Uh, and you know what is the kind of uh, you know, uh, think that the patients will continue this therapy after, say, a couple of months, kind of thing. Uh, do we have any? Uh, you have any experience with your own patients? Because I find it very difficult to convince anybody, even of the richest class, to take this drug on a long term in our Indian setting. So, just want a frank discussion on this subject. Yeah. Anyone want to start regarding PCS? Can I? Yeah, uh, I think. Uh, uh, if you uh, treat your patient <coughs> with high intensity statin, sir, Raman Puri, sir, some uh, audio is problem is there a little? Okay, little. now is it clear? Yes. Is no clear. Okay. Closer. Closer to the mic. Okay. Okay. Sorry. So, sir. Sorry, sir. No, no problem. So, in case uh, uh, in Indian population, the basal LDL cholesterol is not very high, as you see in uh, in Caucasians and uh, other ethnic group. So, if you give high intensity statin uh, in the form of 40 milligram of rosewood statin or 80 milligram of atorvald statin uh, with azetamide, in majority of your patients, I, I tell you, majority of your patients, you will achieve LDL cholesterol less than 50 milligram at least, and uh, and though mm -hmm. some of your patient even LDL of less than 30 milligram will also be we achieved. You know. But, but there are some patients who are not going to respond. Maybe they, if they are case of a heterozygous familial hypocholesterolemia or they have an elevated lipoprotein small a, so they will not respond to even um, a high intensity statin and azetamide combination. Here, these are the group of patients where PCS can be needed. Uh, only other indication is a statin intolerance. That becomes a different, uh, you know, point for discussion. So, uh, if patient requires PCS can uh, you have to just discuss with the patient the natural history in, in case LDL cholesterol is not, not brought down to the level which has been recommended. A majority of patients get segregated. I, I have only two patients in which I have given PCS canine and they are still taking um, PCS canine and both of them are heterozygous familial hypocholesterolemia, non responded to um, high intensity statin and, uh, and uh, azetamide. So I think the PCS canine requirement in our country is comparatively less as compared to Europeans and Americans. But we have to make sure that they are taking high intensity statin and azetamide. And you have taken care of all other modifiable risk factors and including lifestyle intervention, which is extremely important because it does contribute to reduction in LDL cholesterol, which of, of course not lipoprotein small a cholesterol due to lipoprotein small a. I think that uh, this is my uh, opinion and experience. Uh, Dr. Anger can add to it. Yeah, I think I absolutely agree with him. There's a very small percentage of patients where they will require use of PC scan inhibitors. And of course, my modest experience only one patient of coronary artery disease on PC scan inhibitors because he's statin intolerant. He's a doctor. Can I ask? And he's regularly since last, last one year now. And he's quite happy with that. And um, other one is other patients I've used, I've used it in five patients of homozygous amyloid hypercholesterolemia, and in none of them it was effective because they didn't have a deal with this. Can I ask a question here, please? Yeah. Uh, this is for the expert panel. Uh, the Lipid Association of India has categorized the high risk and the extremely high risk. Was it based on uh, a meta analysis or something, or was it intuitive? My second question is: uh, You suggest uh, reduction of more than 30 milligrams, uh, less than 30 milligrams of LDL in the extremely high risk category. 
Now, the problem that we face in our practice is even achieving uh, less than 70 uh, milligrams per percent uh, goals with ezetimibe and high dose statin is uh, pretty difficult. It's, I mean, if you take 100 patients, I, I find that my practice that I'm unable to achieve uh, less than 70 percent uh, reduction in at least 40 to 50 percent of the patients. So how are we going to uh, uh, even the cost considerations of PCSK? It's unlikely that many of the Indians are going to use it over the next few years at least. How are we going to get down to 30 milligrams per uh, uh, of LDL cholesterol? Yes, Raman. Yes, sir. See, uh, I have given, uh, if you have uh, seen my presentation, I have given uh, you uh, justification for uh, uh, extreme risk category because uh, if you look into all those patients who have uh, in, in improved IT trial and in Fourier trial, uh, uh, based upon, uh, uh, you know, TB risk score when they were applied to these, these patients, there were definite patients who had uh, uh, NNT of less than 30. For, uh, for a successful uh, treatment, we can say that treatment is justified if you uh, if the absolute risk reduction is more than 3.2 and uh, NNT is less than 30. So we have, even in Odyssey outcome trial, when there are three vascular bed involvement like CH, coronary artery disease, peripheral vascular disease and cerebrovascular disease, we have NNT of 8 with absolute risk reduction of 30. So if you look into, into uh, the, you know, our recommendations, what we have said that if the patient has coronary artery disease, which is according to our risk algorithm of 2016, patient falls into a very high risk group. If this patient has a target of less than 50, even which European guidelines also recommend now, then a patient with homozygous FH and coronary artery disease uh, cannot have an LDL cholesterol goal of 30 milli 50 milligram. It has to be lower because of a very aggressive and um, very serious uh, ASCVD these patients or diffuse ASCVD these patients are going to have. And uh, we have seen even in Fourier trial lowering LDL cholesterol down to 10 milligram with mean of 7 milligram have shown mortality and morbidity, uh, you know, benefit. So there is enough justification in bringing down LDL cholesterol to less than uh, 30 milligram. And just to, uh, if you look into our uh, category A, category A is those patients of coronary artery disease with high risk features like means patients with coronary artery disease with familial hypercholesterolemia other than homozygous is like you know patients with coronary artery disease with diabetes uh, because our time was very 10 minutes slot for me i would have given you more presentations regarding that so there was a, a lot of discussions which we had in um, creating this extreme risk category a and b and based upon uh, all the documents available and all the Fourier trial, improve, uh, improve IT trial, or DC outcome trial, and postdoc analysis, we, we came to the conclusion um, that uh, we should have uh, uh, extreme category A and B. Now, coming to the level of less than 50 and less than 30, uh, probably my experience is a bit different from uh, your experience because um, uh, we will be shortly publishing a paper on high intensity statin in my patients post angioplasty and post uh, CABG and um, uh, those who are on medical treatment. A significant number of our patients achieved LDL cholesterol less than 50 milligram. Some of the patients even had LDL cholesterol of less than 30 and few have even LDL cholesterol in single digit. So I think that uh, uh, unfortunately your experience may not be, you know, is different from my experience. We can have opinion of Dr. Iyengar um, also uh, uh, about his experience, but only few patients uh, will require PCS canine. And now, for example, you say 70, 50 and 30. And if the patient has a financial problem, as we, as we have already said, it has to be a shared decision. You have to discuss with the patient and if the financial problem is there. So whatever best maximal LDL lowering you can achieve with whatever available drugs you have, that should be your target because nothing more than that you can do. I think I absolutely agree with uh, Dr. Brahman. Just to add to the point, why we created this extreme risk. We all know that patient with ACVD comes under very high risk. Now, we cannot put all the ASCVD into one basket. Now, ASCVD without diabetes is different, with diabetes is different. ASCVD polyvascular disease is different, ASCVD without polyvascular disease is different. So, we wanted to create a separate category and that is the reason 
uh, why this was created, then we need to have a lower Indian courts. And we knew that uh, Fourier and Odyssey, Fourier, the mean LDL came down to 30 milligram, showing the benefits, where the median LDL was 30 milligram per deciliter. In ODC, the target was between 25 and 50 milligram per deciliter of the LDL goal. So with these uh, uh, scientific evidence, these extreme categories were created and the LDL goals were created. And that is the reason we wanted to have comments from our colleagues. Secondly, in my experience, of course, a modest experience uh, uh, of dealing with heart disease patients and interventions, uh, very, I mean, none of them required the PC scan inhibitor except one patient who was a doctor who was standing in tolerant. All of them have their LDL cholesterol less than 50. And quite a few of them have between 30 and 45. So it is not very difficult to achieve. Very few, small percentage of patients will require uh, PC scan inhibitors. And thirdly, with the new drug that is coming out, Bepidoc, as it comes on the market, probably we might not even use uh, I have a question, sir. Uh, what should be the frequency of monitoring uh, this uh, LDL cholesterol? Should it should be the same in all the risk factor uh, risk groups, or like three months every three months, or should it be different in the uh, other uh, the low risk groups? And once we achieve the target, should we uh, decrease that uh, dose of the statins, or should we continue with the so same dose? And for how long should we continue? Ravan. Yeah, I think that uh, the benefit of target is that you have to maintain this target. So uh, if you have achieved this target with 20 milligram of a or 40 milligram of a statin, you have to keep this dose for a very long time. There is no, uh, you know, uh, any need to it or there is no chance to reduce it because it has been seen that those patients in which the dose has been reduced, they have higher uh, CV events as compared to those in which the uh, you know target was achieved for a longer time. Second, even if LDL cholesterol goes below target, now for example, uh, some of your patient uh, of ASCVT, you have given high intensity statin and LDL target is less than 50, for example, it comes down to 40 or 35 and patient is tolerating it very well. Please don't decrease the dose because it is going to give him an additional benefit. So, uh, with uh, hardly any potential adverse effect. So I think that uh, uh, keep this dose for a longer time, keep the target and even if your goal, the LDL cholesterol goal goes even below the target and patient is tolerating it well and there are no adverse effects, you please continue the same dose. Don't change the dose. You know. And uh, once you are able to achieve the target, you, it could, you can have LDL initially for every three months, then you can make it six months. So it is. it depends upon how uh, uh, your patient is responding to the treatment and any change in the treatment definitely will require more frequent uh, lipid profile assessment. So you do it more frequently initially till you reach the goal. Yeah. Yes. Uh, eight, maybe eight weeks or 12 weeks. Once you reach the goal, you can do it less frequently unless there is a change in the clinical status of the patient, a recurrence of ASCVD or some other illness, then you do it. And do only liver function test once there is no need to repeat it frequently. But if you have to uh, have another additional uh, uh, investigation, HbA1c will be a useful investigation in your patient. Come comment from the endocrinologist about the uh, use of statin when you diagnose diabetes patient with less than 40 years, no other risk factors. Any comments from the experts? Or I want to ask one question. I got, uh, what is the uh, minimum, uh, maximum age you should start the febrile hypercholesterolemia? But what minimum age we can give at our start? Uh, it can be started maximum. There is no age limit. Though above 75, the benefits are little less. But it is beneficial. You can start at any age. The lowest age so far has been around, they say, eight years. But I think new guidelines are going to come up. If you diagnose FH, particularly homozygous, you can start even earlier. We have one patient where we have started at the age of five years. But I think what we heard from my experts in this field uh, from Australia, they're going to come out with the guidelines for FH. 
Okay, the day you diagnose FHU, if it is two years, you could start. So you are muted, sir, Doctor Sir Raus. It's right, sir. Only thing is, we what we have opinion on that below fifteen, we should not give atorvastatin to children. What we are taught previously. That is yeah, the reason. Say the safer drugs are uh, pravastatin, and uh, of course atorvastatin can be used now. Earlier, the experience was maximum with pravastatin in the. But after the age of eight years, it is quite safe as per the existing guidelines. But it is going to come lower down. Thing from the chairperson. Yeah. Oh, Arish, shall we close? Yeah. Uh, I think there are no more questions in the chat box, so I request Dr. Sudhakar, Sudhakar sir, uh, please give a concluding remark, sir. Yeah, regarding familial hypercholesterol, it was well understood now, more than what we know it also, and uh, all the cardiologists and the lipid uh, association speakers also uh, very well. They have spoke about the all the lipid abnormalities and the treatment also mainly. And uh, especially, I thank Lipidabha Association of India and the, all these, uh, including speakers who have come here all the way to who have spoken now on virtual conference. And I also so thank Torrent for the this one and the excellent speakers also have done very well. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you so I will just request that please, uh, uh, we have sent a link for uh, feedback. So we'll definitely appreciate if this is, uh, you know, you spare five minutes and fill it up so that uh, we'll uh, definitely uh, we'll, uh, come to know whether all of you have understood what we have discussed today. It will stay further after this. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the opportunity again. Yeah, sir. Uh, Dr. Agar, sir, can we conclude, sir, now? Can we? Nice. Dr. Raghu wants to say something. Dr. Raghu? No, sir, it was uh, really a very interesting session. I think uh, great clarity has been added to our concepts uh, with regards to familial hypercholesterolemia and the uh, in increasing use of uh, high-intensity strategies and also emphasizing the various uh, uh, LDL uh, marks uh, or LDL thresholds that we need to uh, achieve or uh, make the patient uh, come to those LDL uh, levels. And I'm sure over a period of time, this will uh, uh, reflect in a significant decrease in cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. Thank you very much again. It was a wonderful session. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. And now we are towards the end of this uh, wonderful Lipid Academy interface. So, a uh, sincere thanks to, to the respected uh, LAI faculty, our chairpersons, Dr. Raghu sir, Dr. Sudhakar sir, our moderators, Dr. Aman Salwan sir, Dr. Chandrasekhar Reddy, Dr. Rajinder Kumar Jain sir, our speakers, Dr. Shada Bahamad, Dr. M. A. K. Lodi, and Dr. Johan Christopher for making this event a successful one. And today we had uh, 55 plus delegates. So, thank you very much for all the delegates for sparing their time for this uh, event. Thank you so much. Good night and goodbye. Thank you so much, y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.